There's what it looks like outside here in Texas just about an hour ago. We've had branches down, power lines coming down around the city, and brownouts every 15 to 20 minutes. It's all part of this large mass of clouds across much of the southern U.S. And you probably noticed on that opening clip a plume of clouds extending all the way down into the tropical Pacific. There's what we're talking about, a fetch of moisture coming up from the southwest. And the water vapor imagery is great for picking that out. On the models, there it is on the precipitable water panel showing up quite well across Mexico, the equatorial Pacific, and up there into Texas. And that's moisture that's flowing to the northeast. And there it is on the integrated vapor transport product. Not exactly brimming with moisture, but the IVT values up around 300 to 500. That's enough to get some definite precip fields going. And there it is being carried into the southeastern U.S., into Georgia and the Carolinas over the next couple of days, and then exiting out into the Atlantic. So let's go over that surface analysis this afternoon. February 1st, getting into spring here. Tomorrow is Groundhog Day. Rain is expected there in Pennsylvania, which means an early end to winter if you go by those old myths. However, that myth has an accuracy rate of 36 to 40 percent over about 100 years, so you're probably better off flipping a coin. And with those kinds of odds, maybe this means a return to winter. What we see here on the surface map, a large high pressure area covering much of the central and eastern U.S. To the south of that, we've got the northerly flow bringing fresh cold air into the back of this cold front, which is down in the Gulf Coast region. And you can see that some of the waves along that front extend all the way into Mexico. This is very far south and some of that Pacific air even coming into northwestern old Mexico. A rapid recovery to temperatures in the southwestern U.S., 30s and 40s starting to show back up in Colorado Springs, or actually I think that's Pueblo, 48 degrees this afternoon. Let's head into the northeastern U.S. and see what's going on. A beautiful sunset at Caribou, Maine, less than an hour ago. Temperatures down to 10 degrees there. And what we've got here is cold air advection, the flow around that high coming in from the northwest, and driving that thermal gradient out into the Atlantic Ocean. This is all colder air up to the north. You can see those temperatures close to zero degrees. And that's moving to the southeast. It was an unusually warm January in many parts of the northeast. Richmond, Virginia averaged 46.2 degrees. They're somewhere in this area right there. The sixth warmest January on record. But an Arctic blast is on the way well up to the north. We're going to cover that in just a second. And we are expecting some inclement weather going into Friday and Saturday. More details on that shortly. This morning in Indiana, it was a cold one down to 3 degrees at South Bend and 4 degrees at Fort Wayne. But down to the south in Florida, some very warm weather temperatures in the 80s. Miami reached 85 degrees this afternoon, and that set a record high for the date. Vero Beach was up to 84 degrees, and we're expecting those warm conditions to continue into Friday. Temperatures could approach 90 degrees on the east coast of Florida. Up to the north, though, we start getting into some of the cold air Tennessee looking at a little bit more ice this evening, but not as much as last night. And as we move to the south, we get rapidly into the liquid precip. And down there around New Orleans, still hanging on to 50 degrees and 60 in Mobile. And then for Texas, we go back to yesterday morning. Sleet coming down across many areas of north central Texas with thunder. Temperatures around 25 degrees. That gradually moves on off to the east through the day. As that passed through here, that was mostly rain. However, as we go into the overnight hours, 
we get a disturbance coming out of Mexico, and the models did not pick up on that very well. That's it right there developing near San Antonio about midnight. And then it moves up into the northeast Texas region across Austin. And then that massive rain moves into Louisiana and Arkansas. The freezing line is pretty far north in that region. This is all liquid. The stuff up in this area is freezing rain. And that brings us up to the current time. You can see some of the problems here. This is Monday night's NEM model run. That's going to be 6 p.m., 9 p.m., and midnight. And this is when that freezing rain was battering Austin, Temple, and on up towards Palestine and Tyler. But the model was showing nothing. That's 3 a.m., and there's 6 a.m. And finally starting to break out some precept there. Eventually, the models yesterday did start picking up on the details about 18 to 24 hours later, but the fine scale structure was just not being handled very well. And that's a look at some of the ice in Austin a few hours ago, thanks to Adam Key for that photo. Another photo there in Austin, Texas. And this is a little graphic I found on the internet that explains some of this. The freezing rain scenario occurs when you have a very shallow layer of sub-freezing air. We're only talking maybe about a thousand feet thick and above that very warm conditions. So the precipitation bearing layer was from about a thousand up to 12,000 feet and that precip falls into that layer of cold air. Doesn't have time to freeze but finally does when it hits exposed surfaces. Now if it does freeze on the way down then you get sleet. And there's a look at the south central U.S. freezing rain across much of north central Texas, and that will continue through this evening, especially along U.S. 287 towards Wichita Falls and Vernon. And if any of you are down in Houston, there is going to be Skywarn training tomorrow evening, 6.30 p.m. at the Johnny Arolfo Civic Center in Leak City, and that will run about two hours. So that'll be worth checking out if you're looking for something to do. In the Northern Plains, a definite warm-up, seeing 40 degrees in eastern Montana. Northeastern Colorado remains covered in snow. However, Nebraska, Wyoming, they've had a very wet January. Rollins had its wettest January on record with 3.12 inches. Most of that was on New Year's weekend. In the southwestern U.S., a large plateau high covering the Great Basin area, temperatures in the teens and 20s in the high deserts, and in the 50s and 60s down to the south, Phoenix warming up to 66 degrees there. However, with strong clearing, there is going to be a temperature drop tonight, lots of 30s in the San Joaquin Valley, but we're not expecting to see very much in the way of freezing temperatures. And in the northwestern U.S., a nice day, but a frontal system lurking offshore that is going to bring gusty winds to the coastal regions, about maybe a quarter inch to half inch of rain. And the Cascades will get about 8 to 12 inches of new snow. And we'll see about 1 to 2 inches in the deserts of the Great Basin. Heading up north, there comes our next blast of cold air. That will be the final cold air outbreak for at least the next week. This is going to take a track mostly to the southeast, and we're going to go over this shortly. Up in Alaska, though, some mild conditions, temperatures running about 26 degrees, maybe to near 30 around Anchorage, lots of snow in the interior regions, and then we pick up the Arctic air near the Brooks Range down into the Mackenzie River Basin. And heading out into northern Canada, some extreme cold, minus 44 at that same station. i got to figure out which one that is because they're always running some of the coldest temperatures in that region. So let's take a look here. I'm going to go into digital atmosphere and drag over that station. And that's going to be CYBB. You can just put that into Google. And that gives us Kugaruk, formerly known as Pelly Bay. So they are down to 44, 
with some ice needles hanging around in the air there. And plenty of very cold weather, minus 42 along the Hudson Bay coastal region and down to minus 20 at Churchill. And this air is on its way towards the northeastern U.S. A quick look at the upper air patterns, 300 millibars up at about 30,000 feet, showing that troughiness out there in northwest Mexico. There is going to be a closed low south of Arizona, and ahead of that, ahead of the trough to the upstream ridge there, that's going to be an area of deteriorating weather. Also got a jet max across Ohio into Pennsylvania. That's going to be associated with that cold front, which is moving off into the Atlantic. And typically, these jet maxes lie directly over the transition zone. And indeed, temperatures do fall off as you go to the north and the coldest air up there in Hudson Bay. And we head right down to the surface. This is going to be the current chart for this evening. Black lines are going to be pressure. The red lines are going to be potential temperature. And that's basically just the air temperature at the surface reduced to a common level. And these are in units of Kelvin. So if you want to convert 264, just subtract 273. And that'll give you a value of minus 9 Celsius, which is going to be 16 Fahrenheit. Now, of course, you do have to correct for elevation, but that'll get you in the general ballpark. So what we see here, well, a frontal zone across much of western Canada. That'll become very important over the next few days. And also, we've got this 1037 millibar high dropping southeast out of western Canada. Now, all this cold air, the high-pressure area heading for the northeastern U.S., let's run this forward into... Thursday, yep, cold air on its way south. That's going to be a low-pressure area around Montreal. Cold front extending down across Lake Erie and then back into the southern plains, although we're not bringing as much cold air into the central U.S. this time. Most of the cold air in the Hudson Bay region, and we can see that that is going to be heading into the northeastern U.S. There it is forming this concave shape into Maine and New England, and a little chunk of cold air also coming into the Midwest. However, further to the west, southwesterly flow starting to set up. We've got lee side troughing right there, and that means a warm up right in that region. So, this cold air outbreak definitely has an eastern track. So, we go into the rest of Friday, cold air settling in across the northeastern U.S., warm up continuing in the central states and a new Pacific system heading into the western U.S. Before we return to the northeastern U.S., I wanted to look at the 500 millibar heights and vorticity. There's our upper level disturbance across the northern Gulf of California. And we're going to see these short waves eject into Texas tonight, so we're not quite done with the precip. That's going to be right about now, Wednesday evening. And then just kind of a succession of little shortwave disturbances working into Texas and helping to support continuation of that freezing rain. So we do have those ice storm warnings in effect north and west of Fort Worth. And finally is that trough departs to the east during the day tomorrow. That'll carry the precip fields with it. And that'll spread into the southeastern U.S. in the form of rain. And, of course, we've got our other area of interest there in the northeastern U.S. You can follow along here. Remember, in the lower right, we've got the valid time. So that's going to be right about now. And the fields that I've got here, sea level pressure in black. I've got the temperature in red. That's going to be in Fahrenheit. You can see it's quite cold there in Maine. And I've got the wind field also, those little wind barbs. So look up to the top left, and you're going to see that cold air on its way in. We have to go all the way to tomorrow night. There's going to be 21Z. And there's 6 p.m., 7 p.m. Eastern. That cold air approaching the St. Lawrence Valley, approaching Toronto, and moving into Detroit. You can see some cold air back behind it, well below zero. Meanwhile, out ahead of it, 20s and 30s. Overnight, 
that cold air rapidly spreads into the northeastern U.S. It will bring snow squalls along the length of that cold front. You can see temperatures dropping rapidly to below zero. And that spreads on into the northeastern U.S. and drops temperatures down to near zero to 10 degrees. And further up north, possibly some minus 10 to minus 20 temperatures. And we're not done here. This is going to be midday Friday. And then we get the nighttime cooling, and it gets even worse. And up there in Ontario, starting to see some minus 30s to minus 40s. So we could be breaking some records up there in far north New England. Have to see how that works out. And then a rapid recovery for Saturday going into Sunday. And I'll give you another chart to look at. This is going to be sea level pressure, surface potential temperature, and potential temperature advection. The advection shown by the shading. So the blue, that's going to be cold air moving in, being transported by the wind flow. And red is going to be where you have warm air advection. So it's pretty easy to pick out where the fronts are. There you go. And it connects back up into the southern system up there near Greenland. So here's the next big change. So you want to kind of focus on this going through the nighttime and into tomorrow. There's that cold air on its way into the northeastern U.S. Strong cold air advection working into the northeastern states. Not as strong down there in the central plains. And then that sweeps off into the Maritimes during the day on Friday. The cold air floods in back behind it. You can see the coldest air up there in western Quebec. And the coldest period, well, for the Canadian Maritimes, that's going to be on Saturday night. However, a rapid warm-up for the rest of the United States. And I need to get this program rendered and uploaded. It's already 6.16 p.m. It's been kind of a long day here. I want to let you know that I did complete a full update of our list of supporters. If you're one of those supporters, Please look through the closing credits and make sure you're on there. If not, your pledge may have expired, or maybe I just missed it. I was looking through the list of our supporters today. We did lose a few people over the past 90 days. Shanika Johnson, Michael Rose, Lori Root Fortner, Alexander Williams, Norman Barnett, Travis, Brock Austin, John Buma, Owen Broadwater, and Haley. I understand that for some viewers that might be unintentional. So if you still intended to support the program, please head into Patreon and update your info. But we did have some new additions over the past 90 days. Robert Wheat, Daniel Zeljak, Daniel, Walt Lowe, Dave Serena, Milo Tour, Bill Johnson, Matthew Genot, Jake Radermacher, Rebecca Marks, James Erickson, Jordan Wolfe. Andrew Krantz and Travis Munn. That's a longer list and that makes me happy. So thank you and welcome on board. So I'll head on out of here and hopefully you enjoy this weathercast and we'll be back once again on Friday. Thank you for your support and thank you for watching. And please try to share the program on social media wherever you are. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.